All right, so as we were just talking about, we're gonna, today we're going to use point-slope form. And the first thing we're going to do is derive the point-slope form of the equation from the formula for slope. Well, the formula for slope is right behind me. M, the slope, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's see what we can do algebraically to put that equation into a form that we can work with. First of all, what can we do to the fraction? Because when we have fractions, what do we do with them? Anybody remember? Simplify them, but how do we simplify the fractions? Multiply by the denominator. That's right. We multiply by the denominator. What's the denominator in this one? Cost? Um, x2 minus x1. Right. So we just multiply by x2 minus x1. Go ahead and try it. Let's see what you get. See if you can do it. Multiply by x2 minus x1. So as we were just, sorry, what were we going to put here? x2 minus x1, right? Yeah, and then it's m. And on this side, we're going to put x2 minus x1. So okay. M parentheses x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. Right, so what? first of all, when we do this, the whole point of multiplying this side by x2 minus x1 is that it could do what with the bottom? The Cancel, denominator. It Cancel it out, right, Shannon? Because yeah. this is canceled with that. But don't you have to do, oh, it's to the m. It's 1 over 1, right? So look, I'm going to rewrite this. Um, we've got x2 minus x1 times m equals y2 minus y1. You're, you're closer than you think. All that's left to do now is just sort of switch things around. First of all, we like to have y on the left and x on the right, right? So is there any, does anybody have a problem if I move this stuff over to there and this stuff over to there? Not at all. So go ahead and do that. y2 minus y1 1 equals x2 minus x1 onto m. Now, does anybody have a problem? Because we like the sort of the m before the x, you know, with y equals mx plus b. Would anybody have a problem if I put the m in front of these parentheses? No. No, you sure? I don't think so. You would? No? All right, so it's y2 minus y1 equals yeah. m onto x2 minus x1. And there you go. Guess what that is? How come that one says y minus y1? Not it's the same y2? thing, oh. actually. When we use it this way, we're usually given a point and the slope, and therefore we don't, we don't replace the x2 and y2 because we're not using two points. We're using one point and the slope. So the way we use this thing is, okay, like that. y minus y1 equals m1 to x minus x1. That's actually the point slope. Now write this down. Point slope, okay, form of the equation. All right? Now what you really need to do is use it to get used to how to use it. All right, because we don't... So the question reads like this. This is from the quiz. We're going to do it again with the point slope form method. Write an equation of the line in point slope form containing the points 8, 2, and 2, 6. All right? So how do you process this stuff and, and use it to your advantage? First of all, what do you do? When you have two points, what can you find? Yeah. Um, you can find the slope. That's right. So what's our formula for slope? Slope. The formula for slope is? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when we have the formula for slope, we have to put the uh, different points in. Okay, we've got x2, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Then what are we gonna look, what's this going to look like? You've got 4 in the top, right? Because uh, 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. Everybody knows that. But why? Because, yeah, that's right, 4 over negative 6, okay? 2 plus negative 8. Remember, when you have subtraction of integers, you have to write it as addition of an opposite. So adding the opposite. So this is 6 minus 2 is plus negative 2, and 2 minus 8 is adding plus negative 8. We end up with 4 over negative 6, and when we reduce that, what do we get? Negative 2 thirds, right? Now, some people want to put the negative on the bottom. It's fine. This is the same thing as 2 over negative 3. Either one of those is fine. Negative 2. Use one of the points given, the slope you just found, and plug things into the point slope form of the equation. y minus y1 equals m onto x minus x1. Now the trick is knowing what you plug into where, OK? What do you plug into where? Um, we've, got a, we've got the slope, 
m. And it's pretty obvious that what we can do is replace that m with negative 2 thirds. I think most people can see that. Where people have trouble is the y1 and the x1 and the x and y. People get confused. Well, look, if you replaced everything, you wouldn't have anything to work with. So you replace the y1 and x1 with one of the points that was given. We were given two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. It's logical to pick the first point, x1, y1, and just plug it in. So what would we get? y minus y1, which is equal to 2, equals negative 2 thirds, right? Because that's what m is equal to. On to x minus 8. OK? You see that, guys? You know, if you're asked to put this in a different form, you can. You can put it in y equals mx plus b form. You can do anything you want with it. But in this case, they said write an equation along in point slope form. So you're done right there. You're finished with that. Okay? That's all you have to do. If they had asked you to write an equation of the line in slope intercept form, you would have to go ahead and convert this y equals mx plus b, you know, the whole bit. Or they might have asked you for standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c, which we're going to do now. I'm going to go over ahead. If you I were asked to, to write this question in standard form, what would I do? Does anybody have any idea? How you would convert this into standard form? ax plus by equals c. Or even if we were asked to put it in slope-intercept form, any ideas? What would, we, what would be the first thing you want to get rid of in this question? Uh, the fraction. The fraction, good. And what would What's we do to get rid of it? Multiply by the denominator. Multiply by the denominator. Fantastic. And what do we multiply by? 3. We multiply by 3. So where do we go and how do we do it? Taylor, we multiply this by 3, right? Thank you. We have to multiply every single thing by 3, right? In order to do this, including the negative 2. Doing it as I do it, Stuart. As I do it, please do it. So the 3 cancels, right, Shannon? Yeah. This 3 cancels with that, OK? And that's the whole purpose of multiplying by 3. That was the whole reason for it, OK? And then these here, don't forget, you have to do them all. This 3y, this becomes 3y minus 6 equals, we still have negative 2 there, negative 2 onto x minus 8. And we're on our way. We're a lot closer than we were. From here, you should be able to see that you could get it into slope-intercept form by solving for y. Or we can put it in um, standard form is this, ax plus by equals c. Wait, how do you multiply by 3 after negative 2? Why don't we multiply by 3 when? We've already multiplied by 3, 3, 3, and we don't have to, oh, because of the parentheses. You don't have to multiply 3 in the parentheses because this is one expression. Good question. A lot of people get confused by that. Today. Once you've multiplied this here, you've multiplied everything here by 3 by doing that because this negative 2 thirds would have been multiplied onto these. And by taking that 3 out of this negative 2 thirds, you've actually converted the whole thing. That's kind of the, the way that works. Good question. Yeah, Jonathan? What's the A, the end of C line? This AX plus BY, A is simply a coefficient, a number, okay? This is a number, okay? This is a number, and this is a number. They're called coefficients. So don't get confused by them. It is confusing, but don't get confused. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do these right here, the um, rainbows. So we get 3Y minus 6 equals negative 2X plus 16. And now, I want to make sure that my x's and y's are on one side and my numbers are on the other. Simple as that, okay? I want to make sure that my x's and y are on one side and my numbers are on the other. So what would I do on both sides? Well, first, I would add 6. You want to add 6? We can do that. Let's do that. Let's add 6 on both sides. And what do we get? Uh, 22. 3y equals minus 2x plus 22. And we're almost done. What do we do to both sides? Tamara? No, you don't want to divide by 3. See, in this, I know you're thinking y equals mx plus b form, but we're not solving for y. Good try, good idea. If they had asked for slope-intercept we form, we're, we're not solving for anything. Oh. With standard form, sure. we're putting all the x's and y's on one side and the numbers on the other. So what do we do here? Add 2x. Add 2x, OK? And we end up with 2x, OK, plus 3y equals 22. And guess what? That's AX plus BY equals C. And we're done. That's the standard form of the equation. That's the standard form of the equation. And we're done.